doing in this series is the brackets how to make a video game style i know it's not really a great game but this will teach you in depth the basic cores of flux engine and how you can actually get around and make your own cool games with it so in today's video we'll just be setting up the level and handle a little bit of player movement so i've got the default scene over here with the csg collider and the csg model so we won't be needing this so i'll just delete the collider on the model so what we will be needing but before that i just want my camera rotation to be zero on the x zero on the y and um zero on the z so now what we actually will be needing is something for our ground and we will use a cube for that so you go over to the toolbox under basic models drag your cube and drop it right under our camera so we don't have problems with the position so i select one to enable my move to with the object selected then i also want to drag my game view and just tuck it to the side here so i can have a visual of what i'm doing so i'll just drag this out so we have to scale this to fit our ground so i just select three on the number row and scale this on the x i'll scale this on the y sorry i'll scale this a little bit on the x also and we'll just scale it all the way on the z sorry okay but right now it's kind of um the camera isn't like rendering it well so all i have to do is just select my camera one and i will take it up a bit and this is okay so the next thing our texture is looking kind of very bad here so what will i want to do i will go ahead and create a new under new we go a new material and i'll just call this ground material yeah so what i'm going to do here for speed i'm just going to right click look for the color select color and i'm just going to make this plain white no drama i will select this and we are basically done so you hit save and to apply this just drag and drop it and your texture get applied and now we can see that our game is looking way much better so the next now i'll do here is i want to add a box collider to this ground so that objects can have collision to with this of with this ground object so i'll go back to my toolbox under physics i'm going to drag a box collider and drop it right beneath our cube and now the cube can handle collisions so with that being done the next thing we're going to do over here is start working on our player so i'll select meanwhile i'll just rename this to ground for better identification and with that selected if i hit f and i'm going to focus on this game objects right now so back on my toolbox i'm going to go and i'm creating a player over here so this will be a player but yeah you probably guess what i'm thinking is way too big to be a player so we just select the um tool and we are going to scale this down to a size that fits your game basically it's depending on your taste not mine so i think this is okay by me so i'll just position that here all right then more i want to take my camera up a little bit more so i can see because when we add obstacles we need to see what's in our front so i'm just going to do that then i'm also going to create a new material and i'll call this play your material so double click it to open up the material editor and i'll do the same thing i did for the ground select right click rather look for the color node and select this and but over here i'm just going to change the color to a bright red or orange but you don't really need to follow me to the t you can create your own style i'm just doing this for the sake of this tutorial so i'm also going to drag and drop this on our cube here but the way flux work our cube is just simply a visual we can't like add components of rigid body like we do in unity engine so a rigid body is actually a different actor because objects in our scene in flux engine are called actor so under the rigid body can be found under physics so here it is rigid body 
so i will drag this directly under our cube because i want this cube to have this rigid body but the thing is that the rigid body is not going to be a child of our cube rather the cube will be a child of our rigid body so we'll just take that out and we'll rename this to player that's the rigid body then i'm going to drag the cube under our player so now if we with all the collisions if we take our player up and we hit play we can see it falls through the ground why that behavior because we haven't put a collider on our player object so mind you when putting this collider make sure you don't put it under the cube or under the rigid body because since the cube is a child to our rigid body a, the rigid body needs the collider and not the cube just get that logic at the back of your head so if we play now yes we can now register collisions and everything's working fine okay so yeah so the next thing i think we need to work on now is movement that is the player movement to keep this tutorial short i'm just going to work on the forward movement just adding a basic force to the player no drama so to do this we need script scripting is always one of my favorite parts of making a game because it's a fun experience so to create a new script right click new c sharp script and we'll just call this player you can call it whatever you want it's all up to you and we can see down here that the scripts are compiling and the rest so once it's done compiling we have to click is double click it and it will open up in visual studio but if it's not opening up visual you can just go at the top left corner select tools options you can select um source code and you can specify your editor over here so you can system default non-default but i'm going to be using visual studio 19 then there are some other things you can also handle over here like the shortcuts and the rest but i'm not going to go over this in this tutorial but one thing i want to show you guys is this viewport how you can edit your mouse sensitivity and your mouse wheel sensitivity if you just increase these numbers it your mouse becomes more flexible so yeah so now it's done compiling so if i double click this it should open up in visual studio but it might probably not you can yeah you strip this option to reload all then it will probably go through a little process then our player script gets displayed if your player script doesn't get displayed all you have to do is come up to this search bar like i would do right now and i'm going to search for it and i'm just search for player over here and this should probably show us a player yes that's it so now it's opened up here so basically what's happening here so if this is your first time looking at code i recommend you check online for some c sharp courses there are some great courses online by brackies or giraffe academy or freecodecamp.org it's all, all up to you anyone you choose so what's happening here all these are functions like the on start function here you can add code that needs to be called when script is created just before the first game update that is as soon as the game just starts but like i said i'm not teaching you guys c sharp i'm just writing a basic script that will add force to the player so we won't need the on disable and on enable function so i just get rid of them so what we want what we will be needing is first of all a reference to our player's rigid body so we just search for public and we search for rigid body and we just call this rb to keep it simple and so we just create another float to control our force or the force being added to the player floats and we just call this for word force so we just set this to about 1000 f then on start we actually need to register this rigid body over here so what we do just go over to the end here and i'll hit enter and what do i need to do so to actually get this we need to type in rv equals to actor as rigid body so this is basic code you need so that should probably work then on updates 
we need now what we're talking about is how will we add a force to the player so there's a simple function for that we just write rb dot add add force and so now let's just highlight on this you can see applies a force or impulse defined in the world space to its rigid body as center of mass so this takes in a vector tree a force mode and you can do your multiplications and adding forces here but so for now let's just go and create that vector so we'll just write um vector 3 i'll just call this movement equals to new vector 3 so what a vector 3 basically is you know simple basic definition is just three flows representing the x y and z axis the x always comes first y always comes second and z always comes third so we won't be adding force in the x axis to hit zero also we won't be adding force in the y axis to hit zero then we can actually add a force on the z so we can input 1000 here but we will not be imputing this manually that's why i created a variable so we just type in our forward force so over here we can write movement multiplied by time dot delta time comma force we need force mode dot acceleration and i think this should do for now why are we getting an error over here oh okay we haven't Remember, I was still at a point. Always end off your statement or your code with a semicolon as it might cause errors for you. So, with this being done, we hit Control S to save this and we head back into Flux. And over here, you can see it's compiling. Depending on the speed of your computer, I'll be honest with you guys, mine is not that fast. If you know any way to speed up my computer or any tips that could help me speed up my computer, please leave it in the comments. So right now I'm just going to drag and drop this player script under this add script section. Section. Always make sure you put here and always be careful because you can put two of this on one and it will cause some kind of problem. So we just remove this. So we can see that right now our public, the public um variables we created get shown. So what this takes in a rigid body. So if you just select this arrow here, we can see the only rigid body we have in the scene is our player. But there are in cases where you have lots of rigid body in your scene and you have to start for looking for the rigid body you need. What you can do, you can just drag and drop. Sorry, drag and drop and it will still work. So let's try this code out. So if we hit play, nothing happens. But if you look over here, we can see these values are changing. That means the force is being added, but we aren't getting any visual feedback. I know why so there's there's what we call physics material so physics material like defines mostly friction bounciness and stuff like that so we need a physics material new and we go physics material so right now we don't want friction on the ground so I'll just call this no friction and I'll double click this and reduce the friction to zero and the restitution which is the bouncing else to zero i'll save this and to apply this we apply this to two colliders not the visual so box collider select and i'll take the no friction and i'll also do this for my player box collider also and i will take in no friction so let's try it now so if we hit play now yeah we can see yay our cube is finally moving but I feel this is too slow so what you can do over here is just to modify the forward force that's why I made it public so I'll go about 5000 so the shortcut to play is F5 so if we hit F5 our game is going to play and yeah 5000 that's okay but I feel we need something more faster but you can always modify this depending on your taste so I'll just go with 8000 select here and hit f5 and yes and i am fully happy with that so that's basically it for this tutorial in the next tutorial we'll be making our camera follow our player around then i think after then we'll work on obstacles so if you enjoyed this video please leave a like 
leave a comment if you have any question don't forget if you know how you can speed up my computer for me please don't hesitate and subscribe hit the notification bell for when the next series when the next video in this series will come out and until then stay safe and god bless you